Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Um, we have a great episode for you today. Um, a little bit different than the usual, but before we get into that, um, I want to remind those of you who are returning um, listeners and those of you who are new, I want to announce to you that about my Women's Longevity and Resilience Retreat that I am hosting in the Dominican Republic from November 1st to 6th. Um, it is a five-day retreat, focuses on longevity and resilience. Um, it includes beautiful walks on the beach, yoga, talks and uh, sessions on biohacking, peptides, bioregulators, um, a lot of talking about nutrition, things like fasting, uh, fasting for longevity, fasting for health, should you even fast in the first place. Uh, we talk about sleep, optimization, exercise, movement, so many things. And not only that, you get to have beautiful body treatments. We do a gorgeous waterfall hike. Uh, you're staying right on the beach and it's only 10 women. So if this even sounds like it might be something you might even a little bit be interested in, then make sure to go to natnidham.com, go to the B, to the retreat tab at the top of the page and book a short call. It actually won't be a call. It'll be a Zoom. Okay. So it'll be a Zoom meeting. We'll get to meet face to face, you and me, and hopefully my co-host Dasha can make it as well. And we can answer all your questions and and see if this might be a fit for you. So don't wait too long. We're closing registration August 1st. We still have some time, but we are going to sell out. We always do. So second thing on the agenda, if you haven't yet uh, checked out my Mighty Networks private membership community, you're going to want to do that too. So much going on over there. And the way to do that is, again, natnidham.com. It's kind of information central. Go up to the top, find the BSP community page, and you will be able to read all about it. Last but not least, remember that if you get value from this episode or any episode for that matter, make sure to take a minute to leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening to it on, because that's how we are able to climb up the ranks. We are able to reach more people and we are able to get even more amazing guests for you guys. Although, I don't know, we get pretty amazing guests, I got to say. Uh, that being said, we can always get more and do better. So thank you for being here. I totally appreciate you guys. Now, before we jump into the episode, I want to tell you about a new device that I have been using for the last couple of months. Um, and um, there's going to be a podcast on this actually coming soon. But do he, this device is for you if you are looking to reduce your stress, improve your sleep, increase telomere length, reduce inflammation, improve cognitive function, balance your nervous system, and increase your emotional well-being. Like, can you imagine? These are all the things that we normally would, would associate with meditation. But you know what? Here's the problem with meditation. Meditation is really tough. It's hard to commit to, and it's really hard to get good at it. Now, if you're already a master meditator, I bow to you. You may not need to, to look at this device. However, for the rest of us who are not master meditators yet, um, I have to tell you that I have become completely obsessed with this little device. I'm holding it up if you're watching on YouTube. It's called the Sensate. Um, Sensate is an infrasound resonance device that when you pair it with the sessions in the Sensate companion app, and by the way, there's lots of free tracks. You don't have to pay extra for this. Um, this will work toward reducing your stress and improving your well-being. The, what this little device does is it emits infrasonic sound waves that basically feel like vibration right on your chest bone that are synchronized with the soundscapes in the app to provide deep relaxation in anywhere from 10 to 30 minute sessions. Sensate not only works towards releasing stress and anxieties in the present moment, but it also increases your stress resilience over time, improves your heart rate variability, and helps with better quality sleep, among many of the other benefits. I Love it as I'm going to sleep. My favorite track right now is the sound bowls and chanting. It's like the best. It just carries me away. So it's been a total game changer for me. And frankly, my mental health, I've been super busy the last couple of months. And this has been really key as part of the tools that I use to keep myself grounded. So if you need to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system more and activate your sim, act, deactivate your sympathetic nervous system, you really 
owe it to yourself to consider trying Sense8. You can use code NAT10 to get 10% off Sense8 now by heading over to getsense8.com. All right, now let's talk a little bit about our guest today. She is, well, get this. Before I talk about the guests, let's talk about what our topic is. Studies have shown that people who have intimacy three times a week look, look 10 years younger than their cohorts. Can you even believe that? When you think of biohacking and longevity, you don't really think of sex or intimacy, right? But did you think your libido is directly related? Did you ever, so sorry, um, Matthew, you got to erase this, erase this whole piece about this episode. I'm going to start over again. All right, guys, get this. Studies have shown that people who experience intimacy three times a week or more look 10 years younger than their cohorts. Look, when we think of biohacking and longevity, we don't think of sex or intimacy, right? But did you know that your libido is directly related to your overall health? The amount of the libido you experience can tell you so much more about your health than you may think. Your libido is not only linked to your estrogen and testosterone levels, it's more importantly linked to your mitochondrial health, your gut health, and even your brain health. And this is why we're going to dive into sex as a biohack in this episode of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance with Susan Bratton. She is, she's amazing. I met Susan in December at the How Do You Health Festival. Um, I had never met her before. Um, we connected immediately. She's just a spectacular human being and you will never meet a person who is more comfortable with her own sexuality as Susan. She's just, she's phenomenal and she's incredibly kind and super smart. Uh, In this episode, she dives into why sex is good for you, the science behind sex and health optimization, as well as regenerative therapies that can keep your libido thrumming, right? Thrumming, that's like the word of the day. Um, Susan Bratton is not only a sex biohacker, she's also an advocate and champion of all who desire passionate intimacy. She's the best-selling author of 34 books. Like, can you even imagine that? Uh, Countless online programs that teach about passionate lovemaking, bedroom communication skills, and restorative sexual wellness techniques. She's a frequent daytime television guest, speaker from the stage, and expert on myriad online summits and podcasts. As a matter of fact, she's going to be at the Health Optimization Summit on that main stage. So if you're going to be at that summit, not the health optimization summit, back it up. Sorry. She's going to be at the biohacking conference in Orlando in June on the main stage. Um, so in addition to being a sex bird, helping millions of people through her better lover, you YouTube channel and Instagram platform, she is the CEO of a digital publishing company called personal life media, and creator of a next generation line of libido products for people across the gender gender spectrum called The 20. Okay, so to find Susan Bratton and to connect with her and all of the incredible resources, you're either going to want to get a pen and paper now, or you're just going to want to go to the show notes because all of this and more is going to be in the show notes. You can go to susanbratton.com and that's Bratton, B-R-A-T-T-O-N. Go to personallifemedia.com. That's where all her incredible body of published books is. There's the20store.com where you can get a lot of the products that she talks about. Betterlover.com. And this is where a lot of the programs that she offers are listed. And on Instagram, she's just good old Susan Bratton. And old being nothing to do with what this woman represents. Let me just tell you right now. All right, guys, one more Um, One more thing I want to talk to you about before we jump into the episode. Have you ever heard of using the copper peptide in your skincare for reducing signs of aging? Well, if you're a follower of mine, you most certainly have because this copper peptide, you know, is called GHKCU and I am completely obsessed with it. And it is the main, but not only ingredient found in Restora Cell's skincare line called Vitali. Now, why? Well, first of all, a lot of people believe that the copper peptide GHKCU is a bioregulator. Why? Because it works by binding to DNA and turning on and turning off genes that are related to youthfulness. That's what bioregulators do. They flip genes on and off. So when you use them consistently, it can reduce the appearance of fine lines, repair the surface of the skin, and just bring more youthfulness and glow to the skin. 
And this is because GHK copper or the copper peptide helps to make your stem cells more likely to produce the growth factors that are needed to repair the damaged cells tr that trigger the signs of aging. Plus, GHKCU can prevent scar formation, speed up wound healing, and even promote collagen production. It can even also help to thicken skin a bit. So I used their serum religiously after a recent procedure that I had done on my face. And I really believe that it was dramatic at helping to move the healing along faster. Now, if you want to start incorporating copper pep the copper peptide, GHKCU, into your skincare routine, you've got to give RestoraCell a try. Um, also, like I said, the products are called Vitali. So what you want, the good news is, the great news is actually, is that you get to use code NAT25 um, at checkout. And the website is RestoraCell.com, R-E-S-T-O-R-A-C-E-L-L.com. All right. Enough chitter chatter. Let's jump into the episode and meet Susan Bratton. Hey folks, just a quick reminder that all of the information presented in this podcast is for information purposes only. No medical advice, no diagnosing, no treatments suggested here. Before you try anything that you hear about or learn about here, make sure that you check with your medical provider. Susan Bratton, welcome back to the podcast. I don't think I know anybody else who could look quite as good as you with a 5 a.m. start. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I had to take a shower, but uh, <laughs> you're very sweet. Oh my God. No, I guess yes. I was just so excited. I went to bed last night and I was like, I'm going to get up and talk to Natalie. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Natalie, who's been fighting with her computer all morning. So I know, but I'm here. I'm here to change your state into um, one of joy and giggling. And there is no doubt in my mind that that is exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. So you guys, <laughs> buckle up, <laughs> shake off the cobwebs, and if you can't shake them off, Susan's going to shake them off for you. Yeah, we're uh, we're we're in for a ride. So as I would have mentioned in the in the preview, um, we're going to talk about sex today. We're going to talk about sex and biohacking, yes. and. And how sex just makes our lives better. And Susan is all about helping us to access the best possible sex that we can through the ages, um, because it's such an important part of our vitality and joy, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that, and one of the populations I don't want to leave behind is people who are single, right? Yeah. Like there's, and so I also want to talk a little bit because it's obvious, I mean, if you have a partner, Look, it can be complicated they, you could be in, a, in a stale relationship, like you know all about that, or, you know, or a new, new, I mean, look, we all know that new relationship bubble, if we can keep it, if we could keep it going for 25, 30, 40, 50 years easily, that that's our joy, right? And you talk a lot about bringing it back, yeah. which I think is, it's such a, it's such a gift to be able to do that. So talking about how do we do that? How do we mm -hmm. help people to tap into, um, that sustaining or reclaiming of that beautiful early bubble. And then, and then let's not leave our singletons behind because they let's talk about how important it is for all yeah. of us to connect with that part of ourselves. And you talk about that a lot mm -hmm. in your talks, which are always so amazing. And it's, <laughs> it's about accessing a different part of yourself. So I'm, I'm going to let you run with that one for a little bit. Okay. A couple of things came up as you were talking about that. And one was that, that notion that um, sex is good for you. And the thing is that when you don't feel well, you don't feel like having sex because your sexuality, your libido, your desire, all of that is the other side of the same coin as your overall health. So for a lot of women, when they get to be 40 or 50, they hit, you know, perimenopause, menopause, and they're like, ugh the last thing I want to do is have sex, you know? <laughs> yeah, that whole don't look at me, don't touch me, don't even breathe on me thing starts to come up, right? <laughs> it does. And I think a part of it is, and a lot of women are, they go right to, it's my hormones. And sure, I mean, that's a contributing part of it, especially the testosterone. And then if you have thinning vaginal tissue, the estrogen loss, um, those can be reversed with hormone replacement, which, um, which I love, or using the Vasper to uh, get that endocrine cascade. Natalie and I were talking about uh, mm -hmm. a wellness center to which I've been going that has the Vasper machines. I go work out for an hour with my trainer, and then I go over and do the Vasper. <laughs> I'm That's trying amazing. to get, well, I'm trying to get my energy back 
So the Vasper is like this exercise bike and I'm going somewhere with this. It's like this exercise bike. That's also like a Nordic track. You paddle and you use your arms and you're seated. You're sitting on this cool seat and there's cuffs around your thighs and around your arms and they're the blood flow restriction. You might've heard of Katsu yeah. and they're cooled. So what they're basically doing is they're, they're keeping the blood from returning back from your quads and your buys and your tries back to your heart they're slowing down the circulation back to your heart which builds up lactic acid and it's both a it's kind of a high intensity interval sprint training mm -hmm. on a bike where you're resting 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 and then you, you have 30 seconds or 60 seconds where you go full out and then you rest 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 and the combination of the cooling, the blood flow restriction, and the sprinting gives builds up more lactic acid in your body. And the lactic acid signals your pituitary gland to, I mean, sorry, your pineal gland to um, release an endocrine cascade of growth yes. hormone, which mm -hmm. I know we use peptides a lot to trigger more growth hormone production. Yeah, but if you can do it naturally, how much better is that? No that's, needles that's involved. That's bioidentical Hello. as it gets, mama, <laughs> exactly. right? <laughs> yeah, get your own flowing. <laughs> so it so it triggers this hormonal cascade of growth hormone, testosterone, et cetera, that's greater than when I go into the gym and lift weights. Mm -hmm. And I've had three kind, well, I've had, I had triple COVID with long haul that was terrible mm. in 2020 that I'm still trying to get back from. Then I, what did I do? Oh, I fell skiing and like crushed my breast and bruised it and, you know, like hurt ribs. Oh my God. Got better from that. Then I had a facelift and there was a lot of recovery from that. I'm mm -hmm. still pulling stitches out from the back of my ears and stuff four months later. That was You're it. Kidding. But you look, are, I, I'm just going to tell I'm you guys, you got to log on to YouTube because this woman looks, <laughs> but, and, and more importantly, you do not look like you had a facelift. I just want to put it out did there. A good job. He did, did a good, he keeps me looking like myself, my, yes. my plastic surgeon. You wouldn't know if I didn't tell you, but I don't, I tell everybody everything I do. You know, I'm a biohacker. It's, it's a big so, piece of why we love you, Susan Bratton. <laughs> you got, you gotta, you gotta be like, here's all the stuff I do. Yes. I put that, I put those probiotics right up in my vagina. And they're like, oh, I ever thought of that. I was always just, I'm like, just stick them in there, you know? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I wanted to finish off on this blood. Yeah, yeah, on the so I wanted to say yeah. one more thing about it. So the, um, the, I had a face, then I screwed up my MCLs oh my skiing gosh. again in big sky, Montana. I, my binding didn't release, you know, cause I like to ski mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to stay out there and that, you know, I just sure want to stay do. on the slope. And so I had all these little injuries. And so I, it was like impacting my ability to push the weights. Oh, and I screwed up my elbows. Like I'm 61, the soft tissue is starting to go. I take a ton of collagen. I do all the things, but aging happens. And so mm -hmm. I'm one of those people where I look at sexual biohacking and I also look at sexual regenerative therapies. And the yes. distinction for me is that I could go in to the gym and pump the weights, but I'll never get as far as if I go to the gym and then do three sessions of Vasper a week on top of it when I can, when I'm in town, this mm -hmm. is what I, I, you know, I do it at all the times I can, because that's really the regenerative piece. That's taking you not, that's taking you beyond where you can go on your own. Correct. And that's what I think about sexual biohacking and sexual regenerative therapies is that I love, for example, in the Vasper, the endocrine cascade, but what I'm really doing is I'm using it to heal from a series of small traumas that are just slightly depressing my ability to push the weights I used to. And I don't push weights for bodybuilding. I mean, I do. I love to look strong. Mm -hmm. I push them for strength. I push them for agility. I push them for functionality. That's what I'm doing to stay young. And I think that the hormone piece of your 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 libido is very important but it's not the only thing it's mm -hmm. a direct indication of when you hit menopause your overall mitochondrial health your gut health your brain function i mean it ha it's not just estrogen and testosterone it's not that simple True. it's how many watts can you push out of your body because if you can't push a lot of wattage you can't really have the energy to even want to have intimacy but mm -hmm. here's an interesting thing so i could quote a million studies on why sex is good for you but here's the only one that i that i care about that's fine i'm i'm a vain bitch <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope you don't mind me saying the B word, but no, uh, it I'm is good. about myself. I don't call other people that. Um, okay. But uh, I read a study where there 2,500 people were shown photos of people between the ages of 18 and 80 and asked to guess their age. And it turns out that the people who had intimacy three times a week, and I'm using the word intimacy instead of sex, because I want to make a distinction Thank you. about yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> the people who were having intimacy three times a week looked 10 years younger than their cohort. And I'm like, 51 versus 61, I'm in. I mean, yes, like sign me up. 10 years younger. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And especially, and if you, and, and this is the other thing, I don't know if you've seen that Dunedin and Pace study. Yes. It studied like, I don't know how many thousands of uh, New Zealanders over a long time. It was a longitudinal study and basically said, there's four things that keep you young. One of them is grip strength. One of them is cognition, mental function, being able to recall and remember and, you know, not mm -hmm. and find those keys, you know, it's that, that kind of thing. The other one was flexibility or balance. I'm sorry. It was standing Balance. on one leg. Yeah. And the fourth one was, do you look younger than your peers? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so all of these things still feed into your sexuality. I mean, you need flexibility for sex positions. You need stamina and the energy to have sex in the morning or at the end of the day, or I like afternoon sex at my age, but <laughs> Listen, but if you they, can work it in your day, you could you could <laughs> meditate or you could have sex. Yes, Maybe you and, do both. <laughs> well, and and orgasm is a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally have an almost 20 year practice that's often called orgasmic meditation. Nope. So sex is very much a mindfulness practice, especially for us estrogen dominant women. You, we need to keep bringing ourselves back to our body and our sensation because we've got these estrogen dominant monkey minds that keep our eye on a million things because we're prey, not predators. We've got to keep ourselves safe. So we're biologically wired to like worry about everything. So we really have to fight against that and go, oh, that's just my brain worrying about stupid stuff. I need to make out with my husband and have a good time with him. Now let's get our head in the game here, girl. You know, like I, yeah. I have those conversations with myself. Interesting. You, know, you can't overrule your biology, even if you know what it is, it's mindfulness. So yeah. Well, and yes. it's getting, it's getting out of your head. Right. Yeah, and I, and exactly. I'm, I'd Into love your you body. to speak to that about a little bit about, you know, how, how even achieving intimacy Right. And maybe in intimacy, it might be easier because intimacy demands that you're not in your head kind of thing. Yeah. But to have good sex, like getting out of your head and allowing yourself to sink into your body and live that experience and and give yourself to the experience. Yeah. Yes. Is, you have to set aside yourself and your time and put your attention on your pleasure and your partner and your connection. But, you know, here's the other interesting thing. I have this weird dichotomy. Maybe you can help me with it, Natalie. <laughs> So it, it's two things. One, remember how I said intimacy instead of sex? Yeah. Because when I say sex, people think intercourse. Yep. And I, I hold these two very dichotomous beliefs in my mind and in my work. One is that I love intercourse. And since most people are heterosexual, cisgender monogamous, which is what sex people call like your basic male and female pair bonded couple, right? <laughs> Just a dude and his lady. <laughs> um, I intercourse is amazing with a dude and his lady. It can be mm. super fun, but women really have a hard time having the same amount of orgasmic pleasure as their male bodied partners do often. But they think it's something with them. They think they're it's that they're broken. They can't do it. They just got got it in their mind. And and really, what I want to stand for is that all orgasms, the twenty kinds of orgasms that the human body can have, and the twentieth one is wild card. So it's really unlimited. There are many many kinds of orgasmic experiences the human body can have. But I think that if you're in a relationship as a woman with a male bodied partner intercourse is kind of like really big and looming there on the table all the time because mm -hmm. it's what he's going to want all the time and if you're not having great satisfying intercourse then sex the entire throw sex into the whole throw the whole bucket out the window because if it's going to lead to that and you don't like it you're never going to want it and so mm -hmm. what i like to do is two things to solve that problem and they're really at two ends of the spectrum and this is my dichotomy one is 
I want you to learn how to have incredible orgasmic intercourse. Once I tell you that number one, it's a learned skill. And number two, there are a few simple things that are probably missing from your formula that you were like, oh, that might be the thing I need to do mm-hmm. that help you get over the edge yeah. and start really enjoying it and making dates with your partner for yes. intimacy and sex intercourse. But the other end of the spectrum is that when, especially when people aren't into it, because it's always been this, well, I guess we have to have sex. And it just feels like such a hill to climb because we're not as horny as our partners. We're not as aroused as they are. They arouse faster than we do. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're driven to masturbate every day. They are doing that, whether we know it or not. I mean, it's just they're, the male body is like already so far ahead of ours that they're ready to go. And they don't realize that we need so much more aroused pleasuring slow warm-up lots of things outside the bedroom like they're just like drop trial let's go babe you know and we're not there and so the other piece of it for me the other end the other pole uh that pole uh that I carry here uh the other end of the pole is that I wish sex wasn't when you say sex people think intercourse and that comes from patriarchal religious repression it comes from the only thing you should have sex for. Exactly. Yes. Bingo. Yes. yes. We've ended up in this paradigm of cultural repression mm-hmm. where sex equals intercourse and it doesn't. So if I say sex, I'm talking about sexuality, sensuality, body pleasure, heart connection, love making. And I'm also talking about a ton of other things. And recently, one of the things that I put together, I don't know if I gave you this or not. It's called the sex life bucket list. Have I told you about this? Well, I've, I've heard you speak about it. I haven't looked at it yet, but yes. So the sex life bucket list is interesting because what I did was I just made a PDF of 48 different things that are fun to do in the bedroom. It's at sexlifebucketlist.com. So it's easy to find. It's free. It's a download. I don't collect your data on it. You just Mm -hmm. download it. You can print it out. I'm old school. I like to print stuff out. (laughs) Listen, I'm with you. I'm I'm right there with you. And this this link's going to be in the show notes, you guys. I'm taking notes. So go ahead. Thanks, Nat. So what I did was I said, let's expand what our vision of sex is. Mm-hmm. to 48 what I like to call erotic play date ideas because there's a nice. lot of these notions of you should schedule sex but frankly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put sex on my calendar and then be like <laughs> uh, I don't feel like it like that's like a losing strategy but erotic play dates so the idea is that there's so many fun things you can do and try mm-hmm. that don't that are not We're just going to do these three things and have intercourse. Mm -hmm. And that's what, if you're lucky enough to have a partner, that's what gets the new relationship energy back in a long-term relationship as well, is trying new things behind closed doors together. Absolutely, yeah. So I put together 48 super cute, really fun ideas. And they're not as dumb as the like card decks that you get, you know, Mm -hmm. take your underwear off and put them over your head and make a joke or whatever. I mean, (laughs) some of that stuff is just so insipid. I would never lower myself to do things that's stupid (laughs) or banal, but (laughs) (laughs) yes, I am a sexy snob. Yeah, you um, are. That's all right. (laughs) <laughs> the erotic play dates can be really, really fun. They're very exploratory and they're very sweet. There's nothing weird on there. A mm-hmm. lot of stuff on the internet, it's like, I don't want like stuff about peeing on each other on my style. My stuff is sweet. My, I mean, my my top selling book is called Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials yes, to Connected I love Sex. Yeah. I'm about heart connected, passionate, conscious, aware, awake, connected, love making. I like love making. That's what I want. My heart needs to be in it. It needs to be slow. It needs to be sensual. It needs to be giggly. It needs to be fun. It needs to make me feel good. It needs to not make me have performance anxiety. It needs not to weird me out. And so I put together these 48 erotic play dates and I, it comes with a video where it's basically your first erotic play date. And I'd love for you to do this with your husband sometime because you, you print out a copy for him, Yeah, <laughs> print yeah. out a copy for you. And then just pop, once you get your laptop working and you're not pissed <laughs> off at Apple, 
just lie in bed with your little printouts on your TV trays or whatever, little books, and uh, watch me walk you through all 48 ideas. I explain them in kind of fun, sexy, approachable detail. And then you mark each one with an A, a B, or a C. A is, oh, this is definitely going on my bucket list. I have always wanted to do it. We talked about it. We never did it. B is... I mean, it would go on my bucket list, babe, but if it's on yours, I'm totally going to do it with yeah, you. I'm, I'm there with you to give yeah. you your pleasures too. Like we like different things. And then C's are, it's not for me right now. Never say never. You mature, you sexually mature, just like you mature in regular stuff. And you look, you, you suddenly wake up one day and you, and you think, oh, I want to do that now. And you mm-hmm. used to look at that and go, uh, that's freaky. So <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, I wonder how much of that also is regaining a a degree of deep trust with your partner, right? Mm -hmm. There's, I think that so much of meaningful connection with a partner can come through um, this physical connection that we have. And maybe the C's become move up to B's. I mean, look, there might be some C's on there that just like, you're like, you know what? Not for me, not never going to do that. But there might be certain degree of C's where it would take a certain degree of trust mutually to be able to go there together. And to that end, I'm, you know, when, as you're working through your A's and B's, um, maybe you do get to that place where you're like, all right, well, you know, maybe that's not so bad. Maybe we can kind of check it out sometime. (laughs) Well, one of the things that's interesting is that fantasy chatter Mm -hmm. is really a fun thing to do. So if there's something that is a C, but you never do it, but it kind of turns you on, you can create a story about it and tell your partner this sexy story and you never have to do it. So that's another way to handle those C's and even the B's, honestly, because you're going to, and I swear, you will end up with 15 things on your sex life bucket list. And you'll be like, oh my God, okay, well, we need to get busy now. And then it's really fun because- <laughs> we got work to do. <laughs> You know, we're gonna work hard at this. We're high performing achievers for Christ's sakes. So it's really nice if- You have this list and then you're like, we're going to do something on Thursday night. Which Mm -hmm. one do you want to do? I'll order takeout. We'll have a quick meal. We'll retire to the bedroom. I'll set up the lover space. I'll light the candles, put on your sexy playlist, put the topper over the bed. So nothing, you know, so nothing gets on the bed. I'll put, um, I'll light the candles. I'll make sure the temperature is good. I'll get out the fluffy towels. You put on your little lingerie and we'll have a little sexy erotic adventure together, an erotic play date together. And then we could either sit there and decide it, or we could plan for it. We've got to get that thing. Yeah. That's all, you know, that's part of it. It could be a toy or it could be lingerie. We're going to do a photo shoot, whatever it is. You know, I like a lingerie photo shoot. It's so cute and fun. So um, whatever it is that you want to do, that starts you getting excited about your intimacy, Mm -hmm. takes the focus off of intercourse you ultimately get more turned on because the pressure is off and you're playing now instead of Mm -hmm. having to do something you're being instead of doing yeah and that really helps so much with a lot of the issues and in midlife that women in partnership with males end up feeling like ah it's another task Instead yeah. of, oh, this is going to be fun. I've always wanted to try that. It really does create that new relationship energy. So that's one thing. But then one of the things I want to say about if you aren't currently partnered is that about 50% of the things on the sex life bucket list are things you can do yourself, by yourself, with yourself. They are nice. ways that you can increment your own sexuality If you, if you never want a partner, that's fine. If you're waiting for someone and you're hoping for someone being sexy calls them in Mm -hmm. being in still holding space for your sensual pleasure helps radiate the vibrations of sensuality to a prospective partner. So you're still moving toward partnered pleasure by doing them if you want to. I love that. You know, I think it's, it's, well, it's funny, you know, I think in our society, have you ever gotten to a point where you look at someone go really what this person really needs? 
is to have sex <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they would feel so much better or they would, and it brings a, a different, and, and you said it so nicely, like it, it brings it to, you radiate a different mm -hmm. energy and maybe because yeah. you're taking care of your needs yeah. and in yet another way, right? We talk about, we, it's easier for us to meet people, whether, whether it's another friend or a partner or whatever it is, when we're happy and comfortable with ourselves. And if we yeah. care for ourselves you're going to be in a better space to, to connect in a million different ways out there. So, you know, I, I just, I love how this whole piece of sexuality where people could be like, Oh, well, you know, this is just sex. It's just that raunchy or just intercourse or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. It's such a huge piece of our selves as it human is. beings. And um, if we can allow it into our lives and allow it back into our lives and nurture it as a, as as you keep saying, you know, as more than a responsibility or a duty, let's say, yeah. um, and bring it back as something fun that you look forward to that is, that just, and, and it absolutely, in a partnered relationship, it absolutely makes any relationship better. You communicate better, you feel cared for, the, your partner feels cared for, like it's, it's, it just builds that different foundation. But, um, okay, well, unless you have somewhere else you want to go with this, you do speak to female arousal and preparing our bodies yeah. for sex mm -hmm. in ways that I think not a lot of people do. And we don't realize because mm -hmm. um, just under like the first time I heard you speak was at the How Do You Health event in Austin. Yay! And you had us all, <laughs> you know, playing with a ball of silly putty in our hands, making yeah body parts. And, yeah. you know, like I've got a reasonably good grasp of human physiology and anatomy, and I learned stuff that I didn't know, you know? Yes. And so maybe you want to speak to that a little bit because a lot of what you teach and, and it's, it goes down to this, you know, men are ready to go generally at the drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. Women take more time as a society. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She needs foreplay, but you bring this idea of foreplay really into focus as to what it's really doing, like even from a physical perspective, bringing blood to the area, how does lubrication happen? Maybe speaking to that a little bit now so that the audience really kind of, because maybe we, we move away from, from sexual play and intercourse with our partners because we either, we forget that, or as we age, we need more time to be more primed so that we're ready to enjoy. Yeah. <clears throat> <coughs> Uh oh, <laughs> I should not drink lattes. <laughs> that is a lactose thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little, a little, uh, yeah, a little congestion. <laughs> I gotta break myself of those lattes. It's very hard. I love a latte. You no, know, a morning. good latte. Mm. Oh, they're the best, aren't they? I know. So, um, I like to, I like to let women know. So much of the time, when things don't go well sexually. We blame ourselves. We think it's us. We think we're wrong. We're broken. We're slow. We're not sexual. We're over the hill. We're whatever. And I really believe that a lot of times by the time you get to midlife in your 40s, your 50s, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, you are almost ready to give up your sexuality or you're one of those people who is the other end of the spectrum that's like, God, it's just never been as good as i everyone seems to think it is and I want to have that and mm -hmm. I'm going to die and I have to get this, you know? <laughs> and so a lot of women are like, a lot of people leave their part long-term partners and start over. Like this person is just not, they're holding me back. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, I don't want to live in a sexless marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm not attracted to my partner anymore. I mean, there's a, or, or midlife women, especially, they're dating younger men or they're dating other women. This is besides college, midlife women are the women who are more experimental. They're like, okay. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go try some stuff, you know, and I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. But generally women often just feel like sex has failed them. And that's because we have been having sex in a what I would consider patriarchal way. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to just be ready to go. We're supposed to be lubricated. We're supposed to want intercourse. And that's not how it works for a female body. So we've been having sex like a 
subdued our whole lives and that is not serving us. So here's what's gone wrong. The female arousal ladder is much slower because of something so simple. It's called hemodynamics and that mm -hmm. is fast acting or slow moving blood flow. It's the speed at which blood can flow to parts of your body. And if you imagine a banana, it's not very hard to imagine that that's a penis. So there's your banana. You've got it in your mind. 50% of that banana sticks out of a man's body. 50% mm -hmm. of that banana sticks down and inside of his body toward his testicles. But the entire fruit of that banana is erectile tissue, three spongy chambers. Now, if I could take that fruit out of the banana and I could turn, and this is what we did with the, with the uh, Play-Doh, the yellow Play-Doh right. at the <laughs> conference. I got everybody yellow Play-Doh and I said, now to, to first turn it into a banana. Now turn it into a donut with a, that comes to a point on the top, kind of like a teardrop. Okay, well, that's actually the same amount of erectile tissue that a penis owner has reformed into the same amount of erectile tissue that a vulva owner has. Mm -hmm. So we have the same amount of erectile tissue in our vulva in three erectile chambers, mm -hmm. our clitoral, perineal, and our urethral sponges. And those sponges are more like nooks and crannies. I often use the English muffin or crumpet analogy, oh, which is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is basically you've got this thing that needs to be toasted and you put it in the toaster and you press it down, it pops up and it's really not toasted yet. So you have to press it down again. It's a double toast. <laughs> and then you get the hard butter and you cut the butter and you put it on the crumpet or you put it on the, on the English muffin and you, you know, wait for it to melt into all the nooks and crannies. This always makes me hungry and I'm gluten-free. I should think <laughs> of a new analogy. <laughs> I think, I think somewhere out there, there's a gluten-free crumpet. <laughs> We're going to have to find <laughs> you one. <laughs> there probably is, but I, I try not to eat any of that fake stuff either. But um, anyway, so when it melts, all the butter melts into the nooks and crannies. That takes a while. Women are the cold buttered crumpets. Men, we're they're just like zoom, they've got an erection. They've got these long straight shot chambers that run the length of their penis and the blood just go, they they think something sexy and all of a sudden boom, they've got an erection. They're ready to go. They're ready to insert that inside you. And you're still like uh, we just got the crumpet out of the refrigerator and it hasn't <laughs> even been put in the toaster yet. There's not, the butter's still hard and I just can't do this. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number one is that men are just faster to arousal than women. Women need 20 to 30 minutes of consistent and significant stimulation. And there's two ways to do it. And I'll talk about that. There's everted which means from the outside in, actually. And then there's from the out, for, uh, from the inside out, I'm sorry. Everted means from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And then there's from the outside in. And outside in is manual stimulation, stroking your body. It's, you know, telling you you're beautiful. It's, uh, you know, maybe yoni massage, maybe oral pleasure. But before that, there's this everted, which is, really the kissing the, the 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 breast play things that actually start to trigger the letdown the prolactin letdown mm -hmm. just like breastfeeding when mm -hmm. you you are thinking about nursing you can feel the breast milk letting down yeah. in your breasts to feed your baby well you can feel your saliva start to run you might feel your eyes start to tear a little bit you start to feel your vagina begin to kind of awaken from kissing and breast play full body touch sensual massage all of those things and so what happens is our partners are ready to go so they're just like <laughs> you know they just they just go too fast mm -hmm. and we think it's us and it's not 
And it's not them either. It's not their fault. They just don't know. They don't live in our body. So we have to stand for ourselves. And when I tell women this, they're like, oh my God, you've finally given me the confidence to just like tell him to slow down and to ask her what I need. I didn't realize it wasn't just me. And I'm like, no girl, it's all of us. We're just English muffins. It just takes a while to get the blood in the nooks and crannies. The other thing is lubrication. So, Mm -hmm. so many women say I'm so dry. Well, there's two things. Number one, it's nitric oxide production more than it's, than it's hormones. Um, your hormones, testosterone makes you, gives you a sex drive, but estrogen is just thinning your tissue. It doesn't have anything to do with your lubrication in all honesty. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the thicker the tissue, the easier it is to hold moisture in the tissue. If it's thin, it's dry, but it's not really your estrogen. So it's not really menopause. That's making you lose lubrication. It's actually a loss of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gaseous signaling molecule that moves the blood around in your body. You don't have a blood. You don't have enough blood for every part in your body all the time. Your, your vascular system has tone musculature that squeezes it to your brain. When you're thinking to your heart, when you're working out into your pelvic bowl, when you're becoming aroused. And if you don't have enough time to become aroused and you don't have enough nitric oxide to get the blood in there, you really don't get, you just don't get well aroused. And then nothing feels good. And here's why, because that tissue needs blood flow to the pelvic bowl and the vagina is not self lubricating. It's, it's a muscle. It's not a gland. Mm -hmm. The Bartholine's glands are antibacterial. They're not lubricant lubrication. And the muscle is lined with this vaginal mucosal lining, like the inside of our mouth. And it needs the blood to flow to the pelvic bowl and seep through the layers of the tissue to wet the lining. Right. And over time, as the tissue gets more lax and thin from the loss of estrogen, as you lose nitric oxide, as your testosterone diminishes, everything starts to atrophy or shrink desiccate, dry up, shrivel. And so the whole idea of engorgement is you bring blood flow to the erectile tissues, which are, you need as much as your penis owner does. That's a lot of blood Mm -hmm. to flow in there. Mm -hmm. You think about how little a penis is when it starts and how big it is when it's fully erect. And then you think, oh my gosh, that's all blood in there. Oh my gosh, I've got to get that much to my vulva. When you start thinking in those terms, you're like, wow, man, I need to start eating my leafy greens and my beetroot, taking a citrulline supplement. That's why I make a citrulline supplement called Flow. I'll give you a link for it with a special, it's my super cheap, like friends and family link. Nice. Yeah. It's at B-U-Y-F-L-O-W-N-O-W, buy Flow now. I make two products. I make a libido daily vitamin multi-mineral supplement. It has the libido botanicals already in it. So it's like you're one a day with a little something more. And I make a a nitric oxide supplement made from organic fruit and vegetables, not from pesticide laden corn syrup derived Chinese white powder crap. Yeah. And so, I mean, cause I'm such an organic girl. I mean, I mm-hmm. live in Mill Valley, California. I don't eat stuff that's not organic. I just don't put any pesticides in my body anymore. You can't keep going like that. No, you no. Can't. You even talk about the lubricants that you do use are all yes. edible. Like it's that's avocado right. oil or coconut avocado. oil. Avocado. Or... Yeah. yeah. H&B Oil Center. I, I can never remember their exact link. It's oils center or oil center.com. I forget what it is, but I use there and I buy it by the leader because I rub it on my body. I use it for, I mean, you could make salad dressing with it, but it's refined avocado oil. Mm -hmm. And I found avocado, sweet almond and jojoba to be the best three oils for lovemaking because they're very bioidentical. And I don't like coconut because coconut has antibacterial properties that can disrupt the vaginal microbiome. Right. So um, yeah, just Google oil center, H and B oil center, and you'll find the place that has very nice, rich emollient oil. You can get, you can get sweet almond on, and you can get jojoba on Amazon. So there's actually, there's a, there's another company. I don't know if you're familiar with living libations. Um, oh yeah. I love and, living libations. And yeah. she makes, she makes oils specifically yes. for men and for women for, um, for sexual into, you know, for sexual play or whatever. And her stuff's really nice as well. So it is, I nice. mean, there are some good, there's some, some great products out there guys. Yes. Just, you want to stay away from the chemicals. You want to stay away from 
you know, a lot of the stuff you're going to get at the drugstore, it's it's going to kind of get the mechanical job done, but there's very often a price to pay on the other side. It's going to disrupt yeah. your balance or something along well, the Well, lubrications way. are in, in the U.S., they are FDA class two um, under, uh, you know, under that. They have to have preservatives in them. Yeah, so that so by have chemicals nature. in them. And I always yeah. say, if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, you shouldn't put it in your vulva, you shouldn't put it in your vagina because it's, um, you know, why would you introduce toxins into your body? And um, I like all those fancy lubes, those fancy like Curious and Living Libations and all this stuff. But all, in all honesty, I just like the straight up oil. It's yeah, cheap. Well, I mean, look, it's just whatever you, whatever yeah. works for you, right? For exactly. Sure. There's, there's, a, there's a range. So, okay. I, like so a, I use a lot of lube. So I like, something super basic you know hence hence the cover on the bed that she mentioned earlier when we were doing yes. our sex life bucket list working yeah, through our sex I life do, bucket list yeah yeah what i do is i take um a fitted um i just get it on amazon like a fitted um waterproof sheet and mm-hmm. i put it over my bedding and then stick a top sheet over that and then i don't have to worry about getting any oils because i like full body massage during my love making sessions i really whatever I start, my boyfriend jokes to me that my sex life starts with pain cream. Like he has to rub pain cream on me before we even start with full body touch and making out and stuff like he's like okay what hurts <laughs> i'm always like my rib my elbows my oh, yeah. knees my feet <laughs> and your injuries <laughs> okay all right so so the message to the ladies and the and the gentlemen listening really is to really bring attention to this idea of bringing blood flow and it's interesting because we can go back to the beginning of the podcast where you were talking about vasper or katsu and yep. these tools indirectly will also improve the body's ability to bring blood oh, flow to God, where yes. it needs it when it needs it. They're not necessarily geared to sexual organs, but if you improve your vasculature in any way, yep. it's going to make it easier for you to get what you need, where you need, when you need it. Exactly. Kind of thing. Yes. Um, so the bottom line is use good lube. That's just healthy oils of some kind that you like. Take a nitric oxide supplement. If you're over 40, eat your, eat your green vegetables, your beetroots, don't use antibacterial mouthwash. If you're on yes. proton pump inhibitors or acid blockers, fix the problem. Don't cover it up. Uh, and this goes for your partner, your male body partner too. If they've got acid indigestion, they're just eating crap Absolutely. or they've got an H pylori overgrowth. They've got a CFO, you know, or a SIBO overgrowth, fix it. Um, th- those are most important things. Know that you're not broken. Know that it takes you 20 to 30 minutes to get fully lubricated get lubrication assist until you bring your nitric oxide up. And then the last piece of it would be if you still have incontinence, painful sex, loss of orgasmic capacity, shriveling of your genitals, move into sexual regenerative treatments such as- I was exactly going there. I'm so happy you segued there. Yep. Is Femi Wave is my current favorite. Now I am a spokesperson for a company that does Gains Wave and Femi Wave. And I went to them and said, I want to be a champion for you guys. I nice. love what you're doing. This is a regenerative treatment that works. And basically take your husband with you, get mm-hmm. his Gains Wave while you get your Femi Waves. It's acoustic wave that's administered outside the vulva or outside the penis onto the tissue that stimulates new tissue growth. And it helps reconstitute and rejuvenate the tissue. I'm constantly having incontinence problems. So I go in for Femi waves every couple of years to just keep all that at bay because I do not want to pee in my pants ever. The number one reason why women go into old age homes and have to leave their homes as they age is because of incontinence. Incontinence. You're kidding. We have to fix. No, we have to fix that. And we got to start nipping it in the bud when we do, because it is definitely an issue for women. So uh, the pain of painful intercourse can be reversed. You get way more. I'm, I have literally never been as lubricated as I am at 61. Since I started doing the Femi, they finally came out with Femi wave treatments. They'd been doing gains. They were doing gains wave for years. years. Yeah. yeah, Yes. It's like the gold standard now. And now Mm -hmm. they're launching Femi wave and I'm like, I need to go get some right away. (laughs) So I tell you, I love Femi wave. And then the other thing that I really like is the vagina device that I was telling you about. I think Mm -hmm. I showed it at um, the, how do you health conference? I show it everywhere. Um, 
It's a red, it's an at-home device. So some women, there's no Femi Wave in their area. They don't have the money to travel. Um, and they want to do a DIY at home vaginal restoration strategy. And the vagina device at satvaginadevice.com uses red light therapy, the mm -hmm. photobiomodulation intravaginally inside your vagina. It also uses warmth for recollagenating the vaginal mucosal lining. And it uses vibration not like a sex toy it's not a sex toy it's a medical device it's an fda class 2 medical device primarily prescribed by gynecologists for incontinence but all the downstream effects are it reconstitutes that vaginal mucosal lining helps thicken it up helps get you a lubrication to come back it does all of that because what it's doing is that red light that vibration that warmth is bringing blood flow into the vagina now, <clears throat> the one thing that it doesn't fix is if you're having trouble, more difficulty, like I had a woman come up to me at How Do You Health? And she said, you know, I'm pushing 85 and I really, I just can't quite get there anymore. It takes me like 20 minutes to achieve climax. What should I do? Mm -hmm. And I said, easy, get the vagina device, go get some Femi waves and get an O shot or orgasm shot. O shots are PRP taken out of your own body and injected into the, the erectile tissue. That O-shot is also very good for fixing tears like mm. childbirth tears, episiotomy scars, you know, that we get all kinds of wounds in our vulva, lichen sclerosis, you know, there's a lot of things that PRP can be used for. And I'm very bullish about exosome technology, as well as stem cell technology as the yeah. future of vaginal and penile rejuvenation. Yeah. So it's pricey right now, but <clears throat> I think the VFIT's like, you know, the vet, that vagina device is like 400 bucks. Yeah. The, it's, it's called, is it the Joylux or the VFIT? Yeah, that, that's the guys, that's the photobiomodulation yeah. device that Susan was talking about a minute ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can, there, I have a special link at vaginadevice.com where they give you a case and some wipes and some extra stuff that goes with it. So that's nice. That Cause I talk about them all the time too. So they made me a special page. Um, but you can, there are things, the bottom line is there are things you can do there are things you can do for yourself. There are things you can do for your husband. It depends on what your issues are. If it's just mm -hmm. lubrication, if it's lubrication and arousal, if it's painful sex, if it's um, loss of ability to achieve climax easily, if it's shriveling vulval tissue, like one of the things I like about Femi Wave is that as you age, the outer vulva starts to get flaccid. Mm -hmm. And the Femi Wave plumps it all up again and makes it look really youthful. Interesting. For me personally, that's important. Yeah. It's not, not everyone cares. Not everyone even looks at their vulva, right? I mean, I wish women did look at their vulva because it's beautiful. It's part of you. It, it's such a source of life and pleasure and intimacy that I, you know, I really, in this day and age, we women, we need to love all our parts mm -hmm. and vulvas are beautiful and amazing the things they do and and the joy they give us so mm -hmm. um taking good care of it your whole life long means you can not just you know we're talking about longevity what when we talk about our health span staying healthy longer so we have a better life put your sex span in there too yeah. increase your sex span using these biohacks and regenerative therapies I love that. No, and I, you know, it's it's again, it's bring all of you with it. And the the point you just made about the about loving your vulva, and we're not taught to care for that that part of our anatomy, which to your point, that's, is that's so... shame. That's religious repression and shame. Sure, and 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 ignorance. We've got to fix that, right? Like We've how many got to of fix our mothers, that for our daughters, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like we have to, we have to pay it forward, right? Yes. To yes. to our girls. So if we have just just and a couple sons. minutes left, and I know yeah. that you're also a huge fan. And I just want to leave this, like, we probably won't spend too yeah. much time on it because you've got to go, yeah, gotta but go you're a big it. fan of sex toys and sex toys are, yeah. and I don't know if toys is even the right term for them yeah. because mm -hmm. 
there's such an important piece of a lot of what you talk I about. Know. Yeah. Um, and people sometimes I think are intimidated by them or they think, oh, like, no, I don't use that stuff. I don't need yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And you bring a whole new, um, a different way, a different attention to it. Again, it's, you're bringing fun and functionality to it. Like there's a reason for them. And maybe you, we just want to spend the last couple of minutes talking about that. And, yeah. um, and then we're going to tell people where to access your reams and reams of resources that you put out in the world. <laughs> I know I am such a busy girl. I've got a lot to say. A lot of, I, if, well, if, and you're very my, generous. You're very generous <laughs> with your information knowledge. So for that, my we'll epitaph. Well. She had a lot to say. <laughs> and she said it. <laughs> she said it. That's Thank right. you for giving me an opportunity to say it. I'll just keep it simple on the sex toys. And that is that um, one of the things I'm working on right now is a new ebook that's called Orgasmic Cross Training. Love and it. orgasmic <laughs> cross training is this idea that remember earlier I said we can have 20 kinds of orgasms. Mm -hmm. There's locations yeah. to touch, there's techniques to use, and there's um, technology to leverage or, uh, or what I call objects of desire. And I agree okay. with you, toy really is an underserving of what it is. What these objects of desire can do is they can stimulate new neural pathways, specifically in your vulva, but also in your male body partners. Um, many men are experiencing the pleasure of, 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 objects of desire as well. And the toys, there's really seven different types of toys that can stimulate different aspects of the vulva. And um, just start with something, whether it's an air, st an air stimulator, like the womanizer or satisfier, or it's uh, a wand such as the new Vim from Fun Factory, or it's a pulsator or thruster or a um, uh, rabbit style internal external which really helps invigorate the vagina as well as the external clitoral structure or um, g-spot toys that really help um, awaken the g-spot which is actually one of your three erectile tissue systems uh, it's called the urethral uh, system and it's this tube of of erectile tissue that covers the um, urethra that goes from the bladder and exits out the front of the vulva. So that's one, you know, so you stimulate that. So really the basic thing is, and I'll let you know when I have the orgasmic cross training book done, I'm writing three yeah. books simultaneously. I'm writing orgasmic intercourse to teach people how to cross the gasm chasm. I'm writing orgasmic cross training and I'm writing a book, a new book called the quiet vibe guide because I'm a hypersensitive person and I hate noisy things when I'm trying to make love, they distract me. And so I did a review of all of the quietest vibrators in all the different categories from the best companies. And I put them in a decibel <laughs> I put them used a decibel meter in a, a, a booth and measured them all because I'm a nerd. So we could find the quietest ones because some people don't want their kids to hear. Yeah. Some people live in community, you know, group housing with other people. And so you want to keep that stuff private. And so quiet vibe. So I'm working on a bunch of stuff right that. now. I'll let you know when it comes out. Mm -hmm. But um, but suffice to say, just get started. Pick something that looks good to you. Play with it, play with it, play with it. Start to stimulate new neural pathways to pleasure. Expand the uh, and engorge the erectile tissue in your vulva. You won't be addicted to toys. You will start having more orgasms from them. That will transfer over to your partnered sex. Bring your toys into your partnered sex. Ain't no shame. You use a toothbrush, electric toothbrush. You use an oral irrigator. You do. You use a, an air fryer for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Why not an air stimulator on your clitoral structure? Boom. I'm done. Boom. I'm out. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> if you use an air fryer you need an air stimulator that's all there is to it now matt are you feeling happier yeah i'm feeling great are you kidding what what computer problems i don't know what you're talking about i had the perfect morning my work is done here i, I started my day with susan bratton so susan let's tell people i, I only because listen we could keep talking but i know you have to fly no i gotta go yeah yeah, so, yeah. Thank, um, thank you though so why don't we tell people where they can find you sure like where, where are the best places to go to to access your incredible yeah. resources easy i'm on instagram it's my name susan bratton <laughs> b-r-a-t-t-o-n and you can slide into my dms i answer any questions so if you heard anything that i said and you're like tell me more I will be happy to help you. Uh, and uh, my 
video website is betterlover.com. And I think that's a really nice place to start because I have all the orgasmic cross-training videos, passionate lovemaking, yoni massage, vaginal rejuvenation, all that's on there. And if you want to be on my email newsletter, you can go to susanbratton.com and there's a little box on there. Then you get on my sex tips newsletter. I talk about passionate lovemaking, bedroom communication, and um, I love your sexual newsletter. biohacking. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to say, guys, her newsletter is fantastic. I mean, you, you, you know, so you want to save it for a time of day when you have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. even like sometimes I'll forward it to my husband. I'm like, hey, check this out. <laughs> Good. I, I'm glad a lot of women do that. Yep. All right. I've got to jump off. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you in Austin. And uh, may all your computer problems be gone. They're gone. I love you. They're gone. Love you too. Thank you so much, Susan. This is a sweetie pie. Oh yeah, it sure was. Love you so much.